Okay, so beforehand I, I made sure and got the manual out so I can check the torque specs. There's a beautiful diagram in the manual that tells you, you know, what parts connected to what and how much the torque it do. Um, if it's one thing that Mitsubishi does right, they make good service manuals. Um, this is like my standard, my gold standard <laughs> for service manuals. But some of them, some of the books will say, like, it'll show you how to put it together, but they won't tell you the torque. You'll have to look the torque up on a table or something, and it's fucking a waste of time. This, this is so much easier, you know. They put a lot of extra time into this, so. Okay, so the, uh, what we're looking for here is this one, 11. 11. Okay, there's no, there's no freaking uh, torque for that. Go figure. Anyway, the axle nut is 144 to 188 foot-pounds. That's going to be a bit to do. And then, uh, so we start at 144, and then if the cotter pin doesn't line up, we move, we move it until we can get the cotter pin in there. Um, okay, so these are 65 to 76 foot-pounds um, for the shock. And then the for number 11, the tie rod, I don't know, it doesn't say. What's, what's the dealie? Okay, I'll look at look that. Okay, so that part is called the tie rod and the connection, and it is it doesn't it doesn't call it oh tear tie rod and ball joint. There you go, 17 to 25 foot pounds. So that's it, 17 to 25, not a lot. So we start at the deal is we start at 17, and then uh, we uh, and then if we can't get the cotter pin in, just start moving it a little bit at a time. And no more than 25. All right, so, so we'll start with that one soon. Okay, so we're gonna go tighten the tie rod. I'm gonna go set my torque right now. Ah, damn it, I forgot to to loosen it again. We're gonna set it to 17 foot pounds. Not a lot. Not a little too much for this guy. But actually, let me before we do that, let's let's tighten it with a with a wrench ever so slightly because it's really loose in there. All right, so we'll tighten it first with a little little uh, socket. Every, very lightly until we know it's seated. Okay. And then, so I can see the hole right now, so that's good. That's it. That's 17 right there, man. I moved it a little bit though, so we have to. So with 17 to 25, let's go 20. I think we might have to do it again. Then. That's 25. Uh, okay, so we're, I'm going to do it again. Okay, so we're going to go 17 again. Okay, that's 20. But the little, the hole is being covered up by the, uh, by the thing. So we'll go 20. Not enough. 25. Okay. Anyway, we'll just move it so. Okay, so that looks good. And then we should be able to get the cotter pin in there. I'm going to use a brand new one, but it looks like we can get it in there. I'm going to go get a brand new one. Okay, so I got my uh, box O cotter pins here from Harbor Freight. Found one that fits in there pretty good. I'm just going to go bend it. I think I'm going to bend it up. Sometimes you bend it. You bend it up any way you want, as long as it's, it keeps it from, uh, from going out. Okay. That's good. There's the tie rod. Uh, and then there's, uh, now we're going to do the, the shock. Okay, so according to the book, the torque was about 
65 to 76 so I'm gonna go ahead and torque it at 70 there's really no reason to, to move it around I'm thinking because uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't what you would call it um, so we're gonna go ahead and just tighten this real quick Gun just, to, just to go through the threads all the way. Okay. Okay. Now it's time to go torque it. I'm gonna go torque it at 70. I'm gonna try to torque the nut side. Looks like we can do the top one pretty easily. Probably shouldn't be tightening it with this extension, but uh, it'll be okay. Okay, before we do the other one, let's start tightening it. Before we tighten it all the way, let's start doing the other one. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna have to use an extension for that one. right there. I'm gonna go tighten the top one again so we didn't quite finish it. Okay. Let me just do a quick double check. Actually, I don't think we needed this. Well, no, because there's not enough range of motion. But now we can do the top one. So now I'll let them, this alignment shop, mess around with that. But there is an adjustment plate on the top. So, um, yeah, you know what? Did this one have the problem? This one did not have the problem with the brake lines rubbing. That may be the, that may have been the problem with the other side, with the with the the brake bracket rubbing on the on the firewall. It might have been uh, because. Um, this was set all the way in or something because you can actually swivel this the bottom one doesn't move but the top one is slotted a little bit I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be but yeah okay so so now uh, that's the fun one the uh, <laughs> the axle okay so I'm not joking around that um, that axle has to be torqued at a hundred uh, 144 foot-pounds minimal to like 180 foot-pounds so this is gonna kind of suck man. Let's see how far we can get it. That's about as good, that's about as good as we're gonna get it the way it is right now. Alright, so I gotta find some way to lock the to keep the hubs from moving. Uh, uh, let, me, let me see how Okay, we so there we go. I've got my lovely assistant here. Uh, the uh, it's a it's a bicycle crossbar for like women's bikes, so you can put it on a uh, bike carrier <laughs> um, straight. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there it is. I kind of moved the seat back and I moved it forward until I could just get wedge it in there. So hopefully that does the trick. Weird thing is the brake lights turn on. I mean the the side marker light turns on when <laughs> the brake lights turn on. It's kind of weird. What's the, what's the lights? That's weird. All the lights turn on when the brakes when the brake lights goes on. I don't have my. Nope. Okay, it's an interesting thing to note about the Glant. The lights turn on ever so slightly. It's 
like there must be some kind of loose circuit or something. Anyway, hopefully that does the trick. Alright, 144. Oh. There we go. 144. So, good. And that when we can get to the little thing too. So, that was not too hard. <laughs> I would thought it would be harder. Um, shit. It's actually a little too much. Oh, yeah, I know. Fuck. Okay, so we're going to have to go a little extra. Um, if you remember... Okay, so my torque wrench only goes up to 150. So, I'm going to say whenever we get to the next hole, uh, is that's it, you know? Damn, that's, that's 150 already right there. Okay, let's try again. Let's try a new pattern. No. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got it through. That's a tiny one. I think. So this is the old one. I think this one looks more like the old one. Whammo. That's it. Game over. We got it. Alright, so, uh, so that was not hard at all. <laughs> I thought it was going to be hard, but I thought I would have to, like, be super He-Man to do it, but, uh, it, it, it was pretty easy. Alright, so that's why they tell you to torque it, because you may over-torque it, especially with the impact gun. Um, not, probably not that impact gun. Um, my, uh, my hydro, my, uh, my air one, is it puts out like 300 foot pounds so you could easily fuck that shit up oh. they said you could mess the bearing up too so all right okay so that was roughly about 150 foot pounds to get it back to where it was and i gotta make sure i loosen my torque wrench all the way i don't think that i don't think i've ever used maybe i think i probably would have done like 120 on this before but this old pet boy's uh torque wrench has torqued a lot of bolts man Definitely get my money's worth out of it. Probably not super accurate, but it gets the job done. All right, so uh, so that's it. Then we just have to put the covers back on, and then put the tranny fluid back in. All right, um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm not gonna get a video of me doing that, but basically, it's a uh, basically it's um, there's two bolt, there's a clip like one of those plastic pins with the screw in it that goes here, and then there's a uh, there's a bolt that goes in here. And there's a bolt that goes in here and here with a bolt and nut, so it's kind of annoying. But and then and the plate goes on. I have to figure out what torque the plates are. All right. Okay, so I can't seem to find my mini tripod. But, uh, so we're gonna go torque the filler plug to 25 foot pounds. That is something you definitely do not want to over over tighten. It was 22 to 25 foot pounds is what it was. So I got it set here. And the the reason I say do not over torque it is because look at how thin that thing is man you can't see what i'm talking about it's this guy right here super thin man it's so i guess stuff doesn't hit it or something you know stuff can hit the transmission but you know they're gonna make it a little bit thicker than that you know but, uh, yeah so i'm just gonna go ahead and torque it um it requires the use of two hands and i don't have my tripod with me right now so um, yeah, I definitely don't want to mess with this one. This one strips very easily, so. Okay, apparently, uh, they were, t it was, it's tight enough already, so, uh, I think I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, it should be fine. I don't know, I thought I'd just hand tighten this, but, uh, so the next thing to do is we need to fill, fill the transmission up, and we need to put that plate back in there. I'm not really sure what the torque is for that plate, though. We'll go have to look it up. There should be no oil coming out of here take this out okay it's getting dark fast all right so the that's called a gusset plate is what that's called um so basically it's yeah it's a stiffening plate is what it does it, it adds rigidity to the cross member and stuff so um, so yeah we're gonna go put it back on and the, the torque spec was 51 to like 58 foot pounds or something so i'm gonna just torque it at 55 um, you don't really need to watch me do it it's pretty simple just um i 
think this there was one small bolt so oh boy i don't have to figure out which one goes where <laughs> i think the small ones go in the front there's two holes in the front. okay so i got it in there by hand and i think i can do this with one hand so you guys can watch me do it it's kind of hard to see but it's in there I'll just do that Do a little bit of time. Oh, this one's not want to come in. Let's look at that. Okay, so what I think the problem is, this bolt is too long. It's not going in all the way. It's hitting the, it's hitting the end of the threads, and then this is not threaded all the way. So I'm going to go install this shorter bolt here um, it looks like it's the exact same one it says seven on the top too I think I have like a big collection of Mitsubishi bolts that I get from the junkyard so that's where I got this guy from it looks brand new too so let's stick it in there man it's probably inside the car is where I got it from <laughs> one hole I won't go oh this one is too short now barely engages it in there. okay we gotta find one that's a little okay so I found another one it's uh, fully threaded it's almost it's a little bit shorter than the other one so Hopefully that does a trick. This looks like it came from a Toyota though, so I think it should be okay. I think that the threads are fucked up on that that one bolt, so maybe the stock one will we'll go back in. Let me see. I, I kind of forced it in. Oh, what the hell, man? I'm not supposed to do that. Maybe I'm supposed to be using these shorter bolts. I'm not sure. No, because the other one barely fit in there. Pretty sure. Uh, I don't know, it feels like it's hitting something on the other end, so I think what I'm going to do is we're just going to use this one. This one did go in all the way, but it just it gets hung up. I don't know why. Man, I'm telling you, somebody worked on this and they fucked it up is what happened. Alright. Okay. That looks good. Okay. Go ahead and torque. 55 foot pounds. I'm just kind of going on like kind of a star pattern. Alright, we're done with all the tightening stuff except for the Okay, so meow is the final part. Um, we're gonna go put the uh, old tranny fluid back in because it's. I think it's still good. Um, I think you can get like sixty thousand miles on tranny fluid. Uh, and then uh, I have this bottle of BG Synchro Shift here. Um, I don't even know how I came to have this bottle, um, but it says BG on it, and I think it's BG Synchro Shift. It smells like gear oil. Should be good. And I got my fluid transfer pump here. I've used this on my Toyota Previa previously, and it works really good. I've had I've had a hell of a time finding a good tra fluid transfer pump, and I finally found one. I found this at I found this bad boy at a uh, Winchester Auto Parts here in San Jose. That's a that is a good fluid transfer pump. We'll, we'll see how good it is today. So, and I get a little drip pan just in case, so we don't make a drippy droppy in the the. Um, the driveway okay so uh, let the fun begin so there's my apparatus all ready to go and uh, get a little pump right here and then uh, off we go hopefully I, I did it the right direction oh the hose came off that's no good let's make sure those hoses are in there all the way okay so it should take all of this fluid. It should take all of this fluid and not dribble out um, because there's probably still some in there, I, I'm thinking. Um, so I'm just gonna lay here on my stomach. And just kind of watch it as we pump away. You can see the, the level of the fluid is dropping rapidly. It's, it's pushing a lot of fluid in there. And uh, also I forgot to take a look at the cup. I'll show you. The cup is all the way in there. I felt it click, but we'll take a look at it. Shouldn't leak from the axle too. Hopefully I didn't fuck the axle seal up on it. 
try to take that out the other time. But yeah, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be any fluid coming out of it, simply because, uh, simply because, um, it's, uh, it's, you know, we drained it out of there, so there should actually be less fluid, so. We're just gonna do this until it, it keeps on, until it dribbles out. I'll, I'll top it off with BG Synchro Shift. So we'll have, like, a little extra fluid in there, you know? Ooh, man. Almost out of... Yeah, we're almost out of flood. We're at the bottom. This is the best transfer hose ever, dude. Just gotta make sure the hoses don't come out. Oh, that's it. Okay, let's make sure I'll guide the hose to the bottom, make sure we got everything. out of there oh something's coming some's coming out actually yeah that's pretty much it Blowing air into there now. It's hard to get that last little bit out of there. This thing moves a lot of fluid at the time, too. Okay, so I guess that's it. Um, I will go try to put some of this in there until it uh, starts dribbling out. Actually, what we'll do, let's take this out. And if it dri starts dribbling out. No, I don't think so. It's just, it's not really dribbling out. All right, okay, I got another bottle hooked up. Try to get as much as I could out of the other one. Really just start dribbling out. It's hard to tell if it's dribbling out because that hose it like it barely fits in there, man. Damn, it took the whole thing, man. Oh, there we go. There we go. This guy out. Okay, there we go. Good deal. So now we know it's extra, extra topped off. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna use up pretty much all my synchro shifts. So that's a good thing. I, I got rid of some old stuff. So time, time to clean up. I know this stuff is so messy. I'm gonna go torque that uh, drain plug. I'm pretty sure it's not super critical. That one, that one is pretty easy to get to. And uh, just wipe this dribble off here. So good stuff. I knew it would be short a little bit, so because we're on an incline, so, so that transmission is like super full, <laughs> super full. There's no doubt about it. And there might have been, we might have been low already anyway. So it's a good thing to top it off. Now. All right, phase me up. But I did top it off with BG Synchro Shift. I think the previous owner said he put like Mitsubishi Diaqueen in. Um, that's the, uh, that's like the stock uh, transmission fluid. Uh, both of them are good. I think Redline is the best.